Hi, in this session, I'll talk about thematic analysis of qualitative data, the how-to. After this session, you should be able to, one, analyze text using the inductive and deductive oriented thematic analysis. And two, make an analysis framework of your own based on an related existing framework for the purpose of your own study. Thematic analysis is what we do with qualitative data. And qualitative data could be in the form of interview transcripts, newspaper articles, and speeches. The purpose of using thematic analysis is to find patterns of meaning in the text. And in the analysis process, we look for common themes that emerge from the text. There are four phases in thematic analysis according to Braun and Clark 2019. The first stage is data familiarization, where we read and reread the data in order to be familiar with the meanings in it. And the later stages depends on whether we take an inductive or deductive orientation to the thematic analysis. The coding is the second step, whereby we label important features of the text with the themes. Now the themes development and revision depends on whether we take inductive or deductive orientation. And finally, we write up the results of the thematic analysis. Firstly, let me take you through inductive orientation in thematic analysis. This is when the coding and the theme development are directed by the content of the data. We start from the data to reach the themes. So for the initial themes, it comes from the data when we read and reread it. We formulate tentative themes. And then later, as we analyze more of the text, we will review the themes to find that whether these themes are applicable to all the data. And finally, we define and name the themes after we have worked out the scope and focus of each theme. It is important that the themes do not overlap. And it is also important that the themes are applicable to describe the patterns of meaning that comes through the whole set of data. So there is this process of theme development and revision that is guided by the content of the data. Let's look at text one. You look at this and figure out what kinds of information are included in news reports on COVID-19 vaccine. For me, these are the important information that appears in this New York Times article. Effectiveness of the Pfizer vaccine, the two COVID-19 variants, the testing, which is in this case, the real world use of the vaccine, and a quotation of a researcher on infectious diseases. Let's look at text two. This is from the Star, a Malaysian newspaper. What kinds of information are here? For me, these are the important information in this STAR article. The type of vaccine, Pfizer and AstraZeneca, the number of doses, a minister's viewpoint, the arrival dates of the vaccine, and again, the article finishes with number of doses. Text three, also from the Malaysian newspaper, the Malay Mail. What kinds of information are here? I see the type of vaccine. Now it's Sinovac vaccine. A minister's viewpoint again. Arrival dates. Testing. Laboratory test. This article gives a little bit more uh, attention to testing because of certain concerns with Sinovac vaccine effectiveness, then number of doses. You will see that there were common themes across the three articles, and there were themes that were specific to certain articles. Now, let me tell you my process when I did the inductive orientation in thematic analysis. I came out with the quotes you saw just now after reading and rereading the three newspaper articles. 
I had certain other codes at first, more specific to each article. But what you see is what I have arrived at after I have refined the themes based on the three articles. The process is by no means over yet because I've only looked at three articles. I believe I will analyze a few more articles so that the themes will stabilize. And then I can be uh, sure that the themes will be applicable to the rest of the text or the news articles that I will analyze. So this is the process of inductive orientation in thematic analysis. It is all governed by the content of the data. As for deductive orientation in thematic analysis, the coding and the theme development are directed by the existing concepts or ideas. Example, a theory. So when we generate initial themes, it is based on the theory or analysis framework that we have developed or have used from somebody else for the analysis. And when we review the codes in the data, it is more or less checking whether the codes are correctly um, applied onto the data, whether we have correctly labeled the data based on the codes in the theoretical framework uh, formulated as an analysis framework for the analysis. We may work through certain process of defining and naming the themes to suit the data in our study, because when we take the theoretical framework or analysis framework from another study, it is not exactly the same as ours. So there will be certain process of refining based on what emerges from our data. And when the process of uh, coding is completed, we will then be able to uh, give a final form of the codes. But first it is the analysis framework that governs the initial themes. This is best understood in the context of a specific example. So I have taken Haber et al. 2009's coding of HPV vaccine. And they use five constructs, as you can see here. Based on the paper, I have developed an analysis framework that makes things clearer to me when I apply it to COVID-19 vaccine. I find the very first code uh, big, but when I read the paper, it is clear what they mean by it because they say general headline classification refers to whether the headline is negative, positive, or neutral towards the vaccine. And for them, neutral means that the article provides basic factual information and is neither pro vaccine nor anti vaccine. Positive, the slut shot. Uh, sorry, negative, the slut shot. Positive. Moms lining up daughters for cervical cancer vaccine. Neutral, new cervical cancer vaccine. Vaccine label, how is the vaccine referred to in the first two paragraphs of the article? Example, HPV vaccine. Vaccine information, they have nine kinds of information and they will check each one of those you can see in the example column. In the first coding, they check whether all the nine kinds of information are present and in the second, Round of coding, they check how accurate the information are. Next, information about the disease. Does the article provide background information on the disease? Does it link the disease to causes and symptoms? And finally, potential issues and concerns. They have seven issues and concerns because every vaccine has its implications uh, and consequences on the users. So one example is vaccine affordability. Okay, whether the is mention of funding mechanism. So what I have done is to adapt from Haber et al's analysis of uh, COVID, uh, not sorry, uh, cervical cancer vaccine to my analysis of COVID-19 vaccine, and I make certain adaptations. Let's try on text one, the same article just now from New York Times. I have put the five uh, quotes in the top right hand corner. This is my coding. The headline is positive to, towards the vaccine because it talks about the vaccine being highly effective. And it has a vaccine label, which is Pfizer-BioNTech coronavirus vaccine. 
It also offers COVID-19 vaccine information as in the real world use of it and so on. And it also talks about COVID-19 disease information, the two variants and potential issues as well. The article actually continues. I just stop it here. So this is application of Hebel et al. 2009, code book two, the COVID-19 news article. Next to from the start, I found that the headline is positive and pro-vaccine. And there is a vaccine label which is used, Pfizer, AstraZeneca. And there are COVID-19 vaccine information available, but in this case, it's mostly about the shipment and the doses. I did not find information on potential issues and concerns. I also did not find COVID-19 disease information. Text three, I found positive headline classification, meaning it is pro-vaccine, and the label used here is Sinovac COVID-19 vaccine. That's one of the labels. And there is also COVID-19 vaccine information. Again, the shipment information and where it will be used in the country. Potential issues and concerns. Yes, there is certain concern that the approval process may not run smoothly. And there's certain concern about quality control tests but I did not find COVID-19 disease information in this article from the Malay Mail. So what I have shown you here is the deductive orientation in thematic analysis. Let me tell you what I went through. I read the paper many times to understand Heber et al's code book in order to analyze accurately and consistently like them. I even made my own analysis framework the table that you saw just now. And I look for definitions they have offered in their paper, as well as examples they have given in their results in order to make this analysis framework. So that is clearer to me as I go through the text. I have yet to refine all the themes, but I believe I will do it as I go on analyzing because Heber et al designed their code book to analyze HPV vaccine, but I am going to analyze COVID-19 vaccine, the uh, potential issues and concerns will be different. And I also have to recheck my coding of the data. And this is a process that goes on because in uh, thematic analysis, the coding process is recursive. Finally, the writing up process in thematic analysis. This is the time when we weave together the analytic narratives and data extracts and we also contextualize it in the literature. For me, I usually draw a concept map to represent all the themes and sub-themes from my analysis because it is a very clear representation to me on how the themes are interconnected. And it also shows me the participants' perspective of reality. For me, when I write up the results, I would like to portray what these newspapers want to show in their news articles, because uh, that is the purpose of qualitative research, to get as close as possible to what reality is portrayed in the news articles and to represent it accurately to my readers. And of course, I will contextualize my write-up in the literature on disease vaccines. I think those of you who are prospective perceptive will have noticed that the results that came from the inductive analysis is different from the deductive analysis. Oh, definitely so, because the inductive analysis is based on our perceptions of what comes through as important patterns of meaning in the text. But the deductive analysis is based on a theory or a theoretical framework. And each have their purposes, and you need to choose wisely. To understand the theory or the principles of thematic analysis, watch my video on that. Thank you.